So let's talk about stack updates. So the idea is that you have a CloudFormation template and you deploy it, and now you need to make some kind of change. Uh, and so you might think, well, all right, I have to delete the entire CloudFormation template and then re-upload and recreate the entire stack, but that's not the case. Because with CloudFormation, you can just modify your existing CloudFormation template, push that stack uh, to update, and then CloudFormation is going to intelligently uh, change, delete, uh, reconfigure your resources. So you're doing the least amount of work to uh, make those changes and you're not doing the most destructive uh, path possible. There are two ways to perform stack updates in CloudFormation. First, we have direct update, and this is very straightforward. The idea is you're going to directly upload your template to CloudFormation. You could use the CLI for this. Um, and then it's going to just immediately deploy. So CloudFormation is just going to go ahead and apply that uh, directly to your existing stack. And this is uh, super fast to do. The other method is using change sets. So the starting process is the same. You're going to upload your template to CloudFormation. But what's going to happen is, is that um, a um, change set is going to be generated. And all that is is just a way of showing you the difference between what the current state of the stack is and what the what changes will be made. And the idea is that it gives you an opportunity to audit or review what gets changed. And so in order for those changes to take effect, a developer has to manually confirm saying, yes, I'm happy with these changes, go ahead and do it. Okay, so you know that's the two methods for stack updates. So we were saying that stack updates are intelligent and CloudFormation figures out what should be performed, whether it should just configure, reconfigure it or recreate that resource. So let's talk about the circumstances or um, the actions that CloudFormation could take during an update on a resource. And so the first one is update with no interruption. So imagine you have an EC2 instance and you just need to uh, have something changed on it, like a security group or something. Um, so the idea is that this update will be performed without uh, affecting the operation of the actual service. So the availability of the service will still remain. The physical ID will not change. So for EC2, you actually have like an ID um, for it. And maybe here when they say physical ID, that could also mean like the Amazon resource name will not change. Um, so, you know, it's just, this is just a configuration has taken effect. Um, the next case is where we have updates with some interruption. So there could be cases where we don't need to destroy the server, but we need to um, maybe disassociate it with a load balancer and then reassociate it or same thing with an auto scaling group. Um, but because that happens, there is a chance for the service to experience downtime on availability, but the physical ID is going to remain the same. Then the third case is where a replacement has to occur. So there's no way around it. The only way is to uh, create a new uh, new instance or delete the old one and make a new one. A good example is, is launch configurations. Launch configurations cannot be modified. They can only be uh, created and cloned. Um, and so in this case, you're getting a new resource and that new resource is gonna have a new physical ID. So those are the three cases.